when you think the name Brian Cashman, where does your head go? I feel like he's overstayed his welcome. Whether warranted or not, it seems like pretty much any move he makes is bad right now because of, of his own doing, right? Like, let's be real. Like the way people talk about it, the discourse that surrounds it. Yeah. It's that's how it feels. You are locked on Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast, part of the locked on podcast network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making us your first listen every day. I'm Stacey Gotsoulias. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. With me, as always, is my producer, Steve Granato. Steve, what's going on? Hey, what's up, Stacey? We got a big show today. Big show today. Uh, thanks for clicking on it. As we always say, we always appreciate you clicking on the show here today. We are going to run down the last 10 years of transactions, 10 years, a whole decade since 2014 on today's show. And we are going to see what has Brian Cashman done right and what has Brian Cashman done wrong. And throughout this process, Stacey, it, we've kind of found some interesting things uh, as we've kind of dug into the history books here. Uh, at the end of the show, we're going to come to a letter grade conclusion for Brian Cashman over the last 10 years. Stacey, before we dive into everything that he's done wrong, where's your head at with Cashman right now? It it's, feels like it's been contentious here in the last couple of years. Um, mm -hmm. And we're going to get to that why and what we think has been the issue since. Um, but just your overall thoughts here heading into 2024, where when you think the name Brian Cashman, where does your head go? I feel like he's overstayed his welcome. He did really well for a time. And there are a lot of moves that he made even further back than 10 years that were really great. Um, but I feel like uh, baseball's moving past him in a way. I don't know. I just feel like he's overstayed his welcome and the Yankees need new blood in the front office. I think a lot of this right now has to do with recency bias. Mm -hmm. Like we're going to get into, you think 2021 on it's been pretty tough when it comes to major league transactions. There are very few wins when it comes to 2021 on, especially considering in season moves. Yeah. It's been tough. And so, again, I think the recency bias is playing a lot into it here. Like you said, Stacey, you go back. There's a lot of success there. There is a lot of success. I think what doesn't help out Brian Cashman's cause is the uh, well, how he portrays himself to the general public as well. Is yeah. what we see, what we talk about on the show, the the statements and the the interviews and all this stuff. Like, it's, it creates a villain, right? <laughs> he, he has turned himself into a villain. Yeah. Whether warranted or not it seems like pretty much any move he makes is bad right now because of, of his own doing, right? Like, let's be real. Like the way people talk about it, the discourse that surrounds it. Yeah. It's that's how it feels mm -hmm. is everything he does is wrong. And it doesn't matter. Even if the move worked out, it's wrong. <laughs> that's the point it's gotten to at this point. Right. Yeah. So we wanted to dissect that today. Stacy is everything he does. It does. Is it wrong? Let's, let's find that out. We wanted to start with everything that he's done wrong. And then later on in the show, we're going to do everything that he's done right. Yin and yang, positive, negative. So yes. Stacey, why don't you kick us off? Uh, let's start all the way back in 2014. Okay. So the Yankees drafted Jacob Lindgren, um, who did not work out at all. Um, he made his first appearance for the Yankees in 2015, made his last MLB appearance in 2015, about a month later. He underwent two Tommy Johns. He tried to make it back to the majors, didn't due to COVID and injuries, and he ended up retiring from baseball completely in 2023. The Yankees ended up passing on Mitch Keller, Reese Hoskins, and Dylan Cease during that draft of 2014 and the most infamous move that brian cashman made happened in late 2013 for the 2014 season signing jacoby ellsbury to the infamous seven-year 153 million dollar contract that worked out so well <laughs> yeah this is th that's the big doozy right 
drafts are always going to be a crapshoot, and we're going to go through a lot of the draft here today. And I also want to throw this caveat up before we really get into it, Stacey. Let's be fair. The Yankees have been really good on the international front. They've been one of the mm-hmm. best teams in baseball when it comes to the international front. That's a massive win. But yeah, I mean, when you look at Jacob Lindgren versus Mitch Keller, Reese Hoskins, and Dylan Cease, yeah, that kind of stings a little bit. That kind of stings yeah. a little You can look at every draft like that for every team forever, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but we'd be remiss if we didn't bring this up. But obviously the Ellsbury signing never worked out there. It did not. And uh, most of us will tell you we knew it wasn't going to, but for some reason the Yankees thought it would because they thought signing a guy who had one good season to a seven-year deal was a smart idea. And that's kind of when feelings for Cashman started to go down a bit. That was kind of the tipping point there, at least signing-wise. Uh, 2015, the Yankees drafted James Caprillion, who was part of the Sonny Gray trade. He's with the A's now, but they passed on Walker Bueller. Now, caveat, obviously. Bueller, as good as he is, injury issues, but that's a big difference yeah. between those two guys. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we don't even have it in the 17 part of our show, but the Sonny Gray trade, just the way Sonny Gray was handled, whether how much of that is on Cashman or not, the whole Sonny Gray saga yikes right i yikes. mean caprillion hasn't really panned out in the majors either so uh you know a kind of a a one for one neither moving the needle on either side but uh yeah when you when you pass on walker bueller that doesn't feel great just in general yes the tommy johns and stuff like that but yeah, yeah. the 2015 draft was a little weak there yeah also weak 2016 uh yankees draft nick solak who was part of the three-way trade that brought brandon drury to the yankees in 2018 and blake rutherford remember him he was traded to the white Sox as part of the uh frazier canely robertson deal in 2017 which that worked out for the yankees but trade wise or draft wise not really strong for them at all yeah the 2016 draft was a very weak class um, the biggest one the Yankees passed on here in, in lieu of the guys they ended up getting Nook Solak most notably, uh, was Will Smith. Uh, so obviously, and, and catcher Will Smith, not pitcher Will Smith, right? Uh, or any other Will Smith for that matter. It's funny that we have to make that distinction <laughs> yes. as to Will Smith's, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Stacey, uh, the next, the next season is obviously the big one. Yeah. Uh, after the 2017 magical run that ended in disappointment the Yankees traded for Giancarlo Stanton for the 2018 season and we know how that's worked out so far yeah I mean for a second was great and on paper looked good but overall I mean the the stark difference from then to now Mm -hmm. is astonishing yeah yeah on paper amazing thinking of Stanton and Judge back to back in the lineup, just bashing home runs. And for a time and for a few games there, you know, uh, when they're both healthy, they are pretty scary together, but it's been few and far between. Yeah. Now entering 2018, J J Hap trade uh, ultimately didn't work out. They ended up trading Brandon Drury and Billy McKinney for him. Um, him. You remember him? They drafted Anthony Siegler. He's still in the system, but he's only in Somerset. Josh Bro is still there. Brandon Lockridge is still there. But the Yankees passed on Tristan Casas. And this seems like a big one. Shane McClanahan. Yeah, this was a tough draft. Anthony <laughs> Siegler has just not panned out. Uh, he had a really rough and injury late in 2023. Josh Bro has been fine. Uh, he was he had some spurts in 22. But yeah, overall, I mean, when you pass on Casas, who looks like the future stud in in Boston, and obviously what McClanahan has done, uh, tough draft for sure. Yeah. Now, 2019 wasn't a bad draft for the Yankees, which we'll get to in the everything that went right part. But the parts that went wrong, TJ Sikamo was part of the Andrew Benintendi trade. Josh Smith, I believe it was Josh H. Smith, because there's three of them in baseball reference, kind of hard to find. He was part of the Gallo trade. He's currently with Texas and the Yankees. Get ready for it. Passed on Gunnar Henderson. Yeah, that's kind of a big one right now. That's kind of a big <laughs> one. Ultimately to be seen if it all oh, long term is going to be a really bad one. But yeah, passing on Gunnar Henderson is is a little a little stinging. Uh, moving forward, Stacey, I mean, 2020, I'm calling a wash for everybody. Let's just move past 2020. There's really not much there. There just wasn't a lot of transactions, period, uh, in 2020. I wonder why. Um, the 2021 draft stays. Um, Trey Sweeney 
obviously was the big one. The Yankees took in the first round. Uh, they passed on a couple of really big guys, uh, big prospects right now, and Jackson Merrill, Colson Montgomery, and Gavin Williams. These are all really good uh, guys. Obviously, Sweeney ended up being a part of the trade for Jorby Vivas and Victor Gonzalez, which is TBD on if that ends up panning out. I think it will, um, especially given the log jam up the middle. I think this is going to end ultimately be a good thing. Hopefully, if they flip it, but right now the Trey Sweeney thing just didn't work out. Um, but the big one here, Stacy, obviously, it's Joey Gallo. Yeah, this <laughs> is the moment. Mm -hmm. Like I said, that there is the recency bias. I think starts here. Yeah, that this Joey Gallo trade ends up being the marker. This is the 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 tent post. Yeah. This is the inflection point. Yeah, the inciting incident, if you will. <laughs> this trade, including Ezekiel Duran, even if it didn't include Ezekiel Duran, the way that Josh uh, Joey Gallo did not work out in New York, yikes! And Disaster. and that he's still defending it. <laughs> yeah, right. As recent as the GM meetings. Yeah, doesn't isn't a good look. And and like I said, this is where it starts, Stacey, because 2022. Josh Donaldson, IKF, and Ben Rortvet for Gary Sanchez and Gio Urshela. Yikes. The Ben Intendi trade here. Uh, ultimately, I understand where it came from. Did not really work out. Comes with some caveats here and there. They didn't give up a ton, uh, but that's just the way she goes. Uh, right now, it could change in 2023, but Scott Efros for Hayden Wesneski hasn't worked out. Frankie Montes, Lou Trevino for Ken Waldachuk, J.P. Sears, Luis Medina, Cooper Bowman hasn't worked out. The Bader trade for Jordan Montgomery seemed like it worked for a half a second, but the way Monty ended up panning out, this has turned into a nightmare too. Um, <laughs> the way they handled Miguel and Duhar in the 2022 season. In 2023, obviously the Carlos Rodon signing has been a nightmare so far. Uh, the terrible trade deadline that nothing happened in. We're all in, but we're not all in. And all we're going to do is send out Juan Corella for Ken Keenan Middleton. Uh, and then we're going to pick up Spencer Howard for cash considerations. We're all in. Uh, and then just the way Florial has gone down and Peraza and all this stuff, right? Again, it is now looking awful. And I think that's where all of this starts. And this is where everybody's minds are at right now. Yep. Looking at it and just looking at the those recent moves. Just wow. <laughs> yeah. We could We could spend days dissecting all of those and those are just you know those are just the moves themselves they're not even the <clears> things <throat> like outside of baseball like the the stroman conversations like going out with the the quotes and the stanton quotes this off season and just all these other things these little things that remind you right every now and then every couple of weeks if brian cashman makes a headline and you go oh boy what now yeah what do you uh, say now <laughs> yeah and Which that's what you don't want it. you don't want that from your gm you just no. don't you just no. don't. But that's where we're at at this point. Uh, that's everything that has gone wrong. We're going to step aside. We come back. True to our word. Everything he's done right. The NFL playoffs are a full go after week one. There's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is easy to use. There are different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays. You can even find bets in the brand new Explore tab. And uh, if you were betting on football this weekend... You may have been in trouble because the higher seeds were doomed. If you're looking for baseball already, the Yankees 2024 World Series odds are plus 850. They're favored to win the AL at plus 450. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. And Locked On Yankees is brought to you by Ibotta. Guys, the holidays are over and it's time to start getting our bank accounts in check. <laughs> we all could use a little extra cash in our pockets. And after all the gift giving and, you know, other things that you buy, we still need to buy the everyday things that we need. So that's why you need Ibotta. It's a free app that gives you the most cash back every time you shop on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies to toys. So you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. The average Ibotta user earns $145 per year that could cover the cost of a shopping trip. You can buy a flight you've been eyeing, the game you're dying to go to, or a fancy dinner that you've been craving. Other apps give you points that don't amount to much, but Ibotta 
uh, you can add your offers in the app, upload your receipt, and you get real cash that you can cash out to your bank account, PayPal, or gift cards. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the code LOCKEDONMLB when you register. So you just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back and use code LOCKEDONMLB. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store and use code LOCKEDONMLB. Back now on Locked On Yankees. Guys, don't forget to check out the 24 streaming YouTube channel called Locked On Sports today. If you're looking for something on Tuesday and Thursday when we're not around, check it out. Look it up today on YouTube. Stacey, true to our word, everything that Brian Cashman has done right. It's not all been doom and gloom. Some moves have worked out, and we wanted to get into those today, and we're going to do it just like we did the bad stuff. Stacey, the good stuff. Let's go back to 2014. 2014. Signing Masahiro Tanaka. That was a good move. Thank you for doing that because he was a lot of fun to watch and I miss him dearly. Uh, Trading for Chase Headley at the deadline went right at first. You know, had a couple of walk-offs. I was at one. And uh, they drafted Jordan Montgomery that year. So for the time that he was here, that worked out well. (laughs) Yeah. Good draft. Good signings. Like we mentioned, it's recency stuff. But uh, yeah, at this point, things things are pretty decent. Uh, so for 2015, in late 2014, actually, uh, trading for Didi Gregorius, which worked out well while he was here. He had some big playoff moments for the Yankees, uh, especially in 2017. Uh, they also signed Andrew Miller. That worked out pretty well in 2015 and beyond. So <laughs> Yeah, that was a big contract, too. That was a four-year contract. That was a big deal at the time. I think that was one of the biggest contracts for a reliever at the time. Like That was a, that was a big deal. Yeah, and uh, he was a lot of fun when he was here. I liked watching him, and, you know, even though the whole uh, he was a Red Sox thing didn't bother us once he started pitching for the Yankees, it was good. (laughs) Because that is a thing for Yankee fans, just saying. And you all know it. Everyone watching knows it. Uh, 2016 week draft overall, but um, for the Yankees in 2016, forcing A-Rod out at the time seemed mean, but bringing up guys... Yeah, it was. It was the right thing to do because it helped set up everything for 2017 and beyond, including Judge and Sanchez, because uh, at the time it was good. Um, also, uh, Rutherford helped get the Canely, uh Frazier Robertson thing, trading John Ryan Murphy for Aaron Hicks. That worked out well. Uh, trading Justin Wilson to the Tigers for Chad Green and Luis Sessa worked out. Now, Chapman... <laughs> We talked about it before we recorded the show, but trading for Chapman before the season began for now we're think of these names, Eric Jagiello, rookie Davis, Tony Renda and Caleb Cotham. Let us know in the comments if you remember those guys. So they did that. Then they traded Chapman to the Cubs, got Glaber in that deal, which ended up working out really well. And then the following off season going into 2017 they did what no one ever does after they trade a player away they signed the player yeah. <laughs> chapman <laughs> yeah crazy yeah yeah i want to uh, save you you mentioned some comments they i want to save you from a barrage of bad comments oh no okay when you say john ryan murphy fair and hooks worked out you meaning at you mean at the time obviously oh, at the, the time way it ended the yeah. way it ended but was what not you good. got out of him for those first few years yes for what yeah like that ended up being a smart move, a good yes. move. Maybe the the extension was not the right move. That's but exactly that it. Trade that at trade the time, was good. Yes, move. yes. The extension was not just like the extension for Luis Severino and other extensions that didn't work out, which we could have probably mentioned yeah. as some of the things that Cashman didn't do right. Um, Twenty seventeen signing Cash uh, Cashman Chapman, Clark Schmidt eventually went right. They drafted him. Um, Matt Sauer still in the system, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the Rutherford trade, uh, also, oh, well, Rutherford, Ian Clarkin, uh, Tyler Clippard, Tito Polo, which was one of my favorite names of all time. That was the Canely Frazier Robertson deadline trade in 2017, which at the time, I mean, all three of those guys helped them get to game seven of the ALCS. So that was a good trade. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, 2018, not a great draft because it was so top heavy and the Yankees didn't really have a chance to do much with that. But 2018 brought us Aaron Boone. So, (laughs) look, 
again, to save you from the comments, mm -hmm. think of 2019. Think of 2019, right? You get, you're, you're saying goodbye to Girardi and you're ushering in a new era with Aaron Boone and it immediately paid off immediately mm -hmm. like the 20 from going from the 2018 off season into the 2019 season. Look, yeah. say what you will about the guy. Now I know everybody it's, it's extremely polarizing at this point, but at the time and, and what it ended up immediately turning out. Yeah. That ended up being the right, like, were you mad in 2019 before the end? You weren't. No. No, <laughs> nobody was no. a great season until the last game of the season. Yeah. And I mean, even 2018, it was annoying that they lost to the Red Sox in the division series and it was Boone's first season. But, you know, the Red Sox ended up winning the World Series and it always, in a way, makes me feel better when the Yankees lose to the eventual World Series winner, because if you lose to a team that doesn't win the World Series, you're kind of like, mm. so, yeah, he that was a good move at the time. I know things haven't worked out since then or you know things are questionable now with yeah. boone and you know it's great signing him but yeah just uh, just to kind of touch on that 2018 draft stacy as you mentioned uh the yankees didn't have a, a pick until 23rd overall they really only passed on guys like uh like we said tristan casa shane mcclanahan but you mentioned it was top heavy casey mize alec bohm nick madrigal jared kalenic uh, Ryan Weathers, I guess Ryan Weathers has really passed, panned out. Uh, Grayson Rodriguez, like these are all top 10 picks. And then after that, it kind of fell off a little bit. Right. Like the Yankees had no chance of getting those yeah. guys. Uh, 2019, we mentioned it, but Anthony Volpe, hey, <laughs> that was a good draft move. Uh, Ken Waldachuk, Hayden Wesneski also drafted that year. Yes, that the 2019 draft. <laughs> I mean, just a, a chef's kiss, a chef's kiss of a draft. Like, like we said, Stace, we're, we're being fair here as we always try to do on the show. Mm -hmm. Bravo, man. 2019 yeah. draft. They killed it. Just killed that draft. Absolutely crushed it. Mm -hmm. Um, the even the 2020 season here moving forward, right? We kind of called it a little bit of a wash, but you got to remember they signed Garrett Cole here. I'm going to go ahead and go out on a limb and say that's really worked out. I think that I think that's I think worked, that's worked out. out. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> um, and then as far as this draft, uh, they drafted Austin Wells, which still TBD. They did pass on Bobby Miller, but they got Austin Wells. So mm -hmm. I'll take that. Uh, the 2021 season, Stacey. These are again all the good things. Mike Talkman for Wand Wandy Peralta. Yeah, good trade. Yeah, Great, trade. trade. Great trade. Great trade. Talkman. It actually worked out for the Giants too because Talkman did some things for them too. So it for was a little bit, but yeah. Through 23, Wandy. Yeah, Wandy. Way, yeah. way more of an impact. Oh, yeah. Um, and how about this trade? Clay Holmes for Diego Castillo and Hoy Park. Yeah. Do you remember how upset Yankee fans were about Hoy Park being traded? Because I do. And yeah. <laughs> no, no. Clay Holmes has very clearly been a much bigger impact player. Yep. Um, oh, yeah. And then they got Anthony Rizzo for Alexander Vizcaino and Kevin Alcantara which Kevin Alcantara is still TBD on whether that's going to pan out or not. Uh, but Rizzo. Yeah. Yeah. That ended up working out. Um, yeah. 2022 Stacy, I have a, a little bit of a, 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 it's a little gray again, mm. a little gray again, because moving forward, you still don't know. And, and as we get to this stage, you know, you're still waiting for things to pan out or not. Yeah. They obviously drafted Spencer Jones in 2022, which clearly number one prospect right now in the Yankee system. But, but, they did pass on Robbie Snelling. Robbie Snelling, the Baseball America Minor League Pitcher of the Year last year. Robbie Snelling had an incredible, I mean, an unreal 2023. For the top prospects for the Padres, a left-handed starter. That could be a little, hmm. ooh, a little snake bitten moving <laughs> forward. So just, again, we don't know. These guys still got long ways to go for both of them. But uh Yikes. Yikes. But <laughs> hey, Spencer Jones could totally pan out. Could totally yeah. pan out. Totally. Um, or turn into trade bait, especially considering if Juan Soto sticks around. So right. it could end up working out. Uh, yeah. In this uh, season as well, re-signed Anthony Rizzo. Re-signed Anthony Rizzo. Stuck around. 2022. Good season. Uh, they signed Matt Carpenter here during that season, which, yes, it ended not great, but Matt Carpenter filled the role for a good amount of time. A yeah. good amount of time in 2022. And as bad as the Joey Gallo trade was to get him to New York, I think Brian Cashman did a pretty darn good job in getting rid of him. Yes, did it take a little bit too long? Sure. But what did they get out of it? Clayton freaking beater. Mm -hmm. 
They got Clayton Beater out of Joey Gallo. How they were able to convince the Dodgers to do that, I will never know. Yeah. I will never know. And I'll still, you know, again, maybe Beater doesn't pan out. But for the time and what he was and what you ended up getting. They got a breathing human being for Joey Gallo. And not just that, but a a potential stud here. Yeah. A a guy that, a futures game guy like Clayton Beater, 40-man roster, second call if there's an injury right now. I'm just saying Gallo yep. for beater. Not bad, dude. Not bad. Um, and then of course the 23 off season, they re-signed Aaron judge. Yes. It looked like he was gone for a second, but they were able to bring him back, give him the C and figure it all out. Like mm-hmm. they were able to pull that off and then getting Rizzo back caveat. Yes. I know the injuries, but they were able to get Rizzo look good for a while. And it's TBD if it works out here in the 2024, but yeah, it wasn't all bad. It hasn't all been bad. No, it is, is certainly not all been bad. We just right. made the case for all the good stuff. But Stacy, when we come back, what's that letter grade going to look like? I know we come to sports to escape from some of the crazy realities of real life, but can we talk for a second about preparing for real life? According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin and other important medications right in the middle of the worst flu season in over a decade. It's scary out there. I can't imagine a more helpless feeling than if my 77-year-old mom got sick while a supply chain issue kept her from the life-saving medication she needed. Thankfully, we'll be okay because of Jace Medical. The Jace case case is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including UTIs, respiratory infections, sinusitis, skin infections, among others. This stuff could happen to any of us. Visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter. It'll be reviewed by a board-certified physician, and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at the fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than today, so go to jacemedical.com and use offer code Locked On to get $20 off your order. Back now on Locked on Yankees. Stacy, we're dissecting Brian Cashman today, which has been an interesting experiment. Yeah, been a very not literally, experiment. obviously. <laughs> Wait, what? Not you, literally. You haven't? Oh, no. so I, I, I need no. to. I, Did you okay, ever have to do that in high school science class? Oh, yeah. Disgusting. The I dissected didn't. a pig. It was disgusting. Yeah. yeah, no, I got out of it somehow. I don't remember how, but I know I did. Never had to do it. <laughs> for like way too long, too, by the way. Like we we had those pigs in the fridge for like three weeks. It was terrifying. Anyway, we did good morning. Frogs in our school pigs. What? Yeah, they were like little baby the piglets. That's even worse. <laughs> Delicious. Anyway, uh, okay. Final thoughts here, Stacy. Before we get into our letter grades, did you have any final thoughts that just didn't really fit into the positive and negative? I kind of mentioned a little bit as as far as like handling the media and things like that. Those are obviously yeah. big knocks for me mm-hmm. um and just like saying negative things about players i think is just not the place of a general manager yeah uh, or really anybody really i mean yeah anyone who's the face of your team shouldn't be saying things like that right no. like, no. two in the news for me when it comes to to general manager uh i like when a general manager is just not really part of it you, it's it's like a, it's like good umpiring right you want your gm to be a good umpire yeah, you don't want you don't to know their names. Them. You don't know them. Yeah. You don't notice them. You at don't all. want to know them. Mm-hmm. But do you have any final thoughts on, on Cashman before we get to our letter grades? Looking at these moves and dissecting them the way they did really illustrated to me how hard it is to draft baseball players. Extremely. <laughs> I mean, it really Extremely. is, you know, um, and it's also hard to figure out what moves are going to pan out. I mean, we spoke about it, the, especially the Montas Trevino move. On paper, that looked great. And it probably should have worked out, but it didn't. So I feel like we, we meaning collectively Yankee fans, give Cashman too much. Um, like, we're too hard on him for certain things that are out of his control. But there are certain moves he did make that we talked about that he shouldn't have made. But overall, I feel like we're a little bit too hard on him. You're right about the coming out and saying things, things he needs to shut up. But, you know, for the moves that he's made, he's been pretty good, even in the last 10 years, you know? Wow. I Look at this change of heart. You seen this, folks? <sighs> yeah. Mark it down on the calendar. Very um, <laughs> for me... 
look, I, I, I will always praise when I think it's necessary. I will criticize when I think it's necessary. And uh, I mentioned it earlier. We didn't really get into it. Yankees have been incredible on the international side. Look, that's not all Brian Cashman. I, right. Most of it's probably not Brian Cashman, to be fair. Mm. Not all these things are just him. Right. But he's the one that pulls the trigger, right? He's the one that makes the final decision. So when it comes to that, you can dissect every general manager on every team in every sport. And you're probably going to find fairly similar things that we found, right? There's going to be good trades. There's going to be bad trades. There's going to be good drafts. There's going to be bad drafts. You're going to see that everywhere. I think what happens when it comes to Brian Cashman is the microscope gets zoomed in further and further for a few reasons. One, I said a few times, recency bias. Very clearly, that is at play here, right? To look at the Chapman stuff, like, it, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. That ended up working out pretty good. Yes, I know. The one the image you're all going to remember is 2019. But save that one day. A couple days, but overall, yeah, um, that's number one. Number two is he does invite the criticism himself, like you said. He he says he speaks a lot. He comes out and talks a lot, which I talk about on the show a lot too. Where I go, dude, just stop, just stop, just stop, just stop. It's not worth it. You're not yeah. gaining anything here. I get that you have to ask answer questions, and you should, but it's all about demeanor and how it looks to the public, right? That, I think, invites a lot of the criticism that he has gotten. Is all of it warranted? No. No. Is some of it warranted? Yes. Yes, it definitely is. But I think the time has come here, Stace. Our letter grade for the last 10 years of Brian Cashman. Where do you stand? I'll let you go first. Oh, gosh. Um. Oh. Letter grade. C plus? <laughs> One C plus. I was thinking C plus or B minus. I'm not sure. Like, I'm not sure if it's like a 79.4 or a 79.8, which would bring it up to a <laughs> B minus. Yeah. I think I'm right there holding hands with you. I think I'm in the C minus camp. Ooh. And I think a lot of that is, is recency bias. Yeah. The, the, the last two years, dude, Oof. almost Just... nothing has really panned out. Like yeah. almost nothing. Yeah, I feel like those last two years really did a lot to hurt his reputation. Um, I also feel like the World Series drought, not that it's his fault completely, but that also doesn't help either, um, yeah. especially in it's the eyes waning. of Yankee it's fans. It's starting to yeah. weigh on you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, after seeing everything we just talked about, give us your letter grade in the comment section here on the YouTube side. Very curious what you guys have to say about that. Um, yeah, it's, it's a lot to think about. And I think part of this experiment is learning that look, man, it, again, you could do this to every general manager in every sport yeah. and it's it, not, everything's a, a home run slam dunk, right? It's just never going to work out that way. It's you make the best call when you can. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Uh, let us know how you're feeling about that in the comments section. Um, of course, you could join the Lockdown Yankees Insiders Club to text us about it as well. We'd love to hear what our insiders have to say. You can always shoot us a text on the Lockdown Yankees Insiders Club. Check the episode description for a 14-day free trial and see how it all works out. Um, but that's going to do it for today's Lockdown Yankees. I'm Steve Granato. And I'm Stacey Gotsoulias. We'll see you on Friday.